Michelangelo's Surprise by Tony Parillo. Michelangelo's Surprise. Not one person in all of Florence could remember anything like it. When the church bells rang to wake them in ja that January morning, the whole city was covered with snow. It lay deep in the narrow streets and in every piazza. It was piled high on the domes and steep roofs of every building. And when the people went to the marketplace below the church of San Lorenzo, they laughed and they played as they brushed the snowflakes from their clothes. The ruler of Florence, Piero de Medici, watched from a window in his palazzo across from the marketplace. He decided that he should do something so special, so great, that this day would always be remembered. He called for his valet and said, Please, go and wake my family and bring them to me. I have something exciting to tell them. We will have a festival today, he said when they had gathered together, and a special surprise too. Piero turned to his valet, have a messenger go to the house of Ser Buonarroti and fetch his son Michelangelo. Outside in the hall stood Sandro, the youngest of all the pages who lived and worked in the palazzo. His excitement grew as he listened. A festival? He thought. But what could Signora Piero want? with the young sculptor Michelangelo. Would he be part of his surprise? Sandro turned and ran. First he found his mother. She was changing bed linens in Piero's uh, chamber. Signora is having a festival. Mama, Sandro shouted as he rushed into the room, and he has sent for Michelangelo. Sandro, Sandro, said his mother, slow down. Why do you think he wants Michelangelo to come? I can't imagine, she replied. I bet Papa will know. Sandro's father was Piero's chief steward and knew about everything that happened in the household, and so Sandro rushed out the door. The palazzo was so big, Sandro didn't know where to look first. He decided to climb the stairs to the loggia, which he opened to, which had opened to the cold air and had a view of the courtyard and surrounding rooms. Maybe he would see his father from up here. Sandro was surprised when he got to the loggia. All the chambermaids and the valets and the pages, they were all there, airing out the linens and the clothes that, and were leaning over the balustrade looking into the courtyard. Is my father down, down there? Sandro asked his friend Carlo, the page who kept the fires in the palazzo burning at night. He had finished his work shortly before and was there visiting with the other servants. I saw him going toward the great hall, his friend answered. Thanks, Sandro called out his over his shoulder as he left. When he arrived in the great hall, the massive table to the at one end of the room was being set for feast. The master carver and his assistant table layers, servers, and sweepers rushed about. 
Sandro laughed when he noticed that no one listened as the old head butler waved and shouted commands at them. But he didn't see his father, so he turned and went on into the kitchen. In the kitchen, Sandro darted between the head cook and his assistants as they plucked and cut and diced and stuffed. Sandro, shouted the head cook, you are in everyone's way. I can't find my father. Well, he's certainly not here. A porter with his arms full of firewood said, I thought I saw him going into the chapel. When Sandro stepped into the dark chapel, he didn't see anyone at all. Who's there? A deep voice echoed from high above, and Sandro jumped as at the sound. On the scaffolding stood an artist, and he was hard at work with a fresco. He came and went again, said the painter, when Sandro asked about his father. Try the stable. I think he went there. Only the sound of horses and the scraping of their hooves on the cold cobbles broke the stillness in the stable, but Sandro could hear a great commotion coming from the courtyard outside. People laughing and shouting and clapping their hands. Dogs were barking, and there was some music. Sandro crept to the arch leading to the courtyard and peeked through. He could see the Medici family, Piero, his wife, and the children, gentlemen and ladies-in-waiting, and all the other pages, grooms, chambermaids, and valets. And there, in the middle of everyone, he finally found his father, the tallest in the Medici household. He stood gr grinning down at Sandro, for on his shoulders sat Michelangelo. At work on Piero's surprise, a great giant made from snow. Where have you been? said Piero's father. I searched the whole house for you, from the loggia upstairs to the great hall in the kitchen and the chapel, even the stable. I was sure you would miss the Signora's surprise. Sandro started to explain, but he could only grin bashfully as everyone laughed, even Michelangelo, who was always serious, stopped work for a moment and smiled. The winter festival went late into the night, and long afterward, Sandra remembered how Michelangelo's snowman shone as bright as the moon under the dancing light. About Michelangelo. Michelangelo Bernardotti, 1475 to 1564, was born near the city of Florence, and was a famous artist of the Italian Renaissance. In 1494, after an unusually heavy snowfall, Piero de, Medi Piero de Medici, the ruler of Florence at that time, really did summon the young artist to his palazzo to make a snowman. Michelangelo went on to become a great painter, sculptor, and architect. His many works include the colossal statue of David, the Dome of St. Peter Basilica, but perhaps his most famous is the series of frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome. During his long life, Michelangelo depended on the Medici family for his, their patronage. Today, the work can be seen throughout Italy. It includes the Medici Chapel, and part of the Church of San Lorenzo, which still stands above the marketplace in the city of Florence.